I recently had a, a rather unfortunate conversation with a dear friend of mine. Uh, turns out, uh, he feels that he is called to be a pastor. He's a Protestant. Uh, he's Reformed. And he feels that it is his calling in life to be a minister of the Protestant gospel. And he called me, and he wanted to, he, he wanted to talk to me about it. And I, I've been in the, the pastor before. I was in a, a youth pastor. I was an associate pastor. And he kind of wanted some advice. You know, what is, what is there to expect? And, and how did I go about doing certain things? And it, as much as I wanted to encourage him, I simply, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. And I was at a real... I was at a real crisis point, really, uh, with him, where I had to balance out my love for this individual. He's a dear friend, as I said, a dear friend. And he's, he was supportive of me when I went into the ministry. Okay, So I have, on the one hand, I have my love for a friend. And on the other hand, I've got the belief uh, uh, in the dogma of holy orders. Okay, We believe in holy orders. We do not believe, as Catholics, that people can just assume for themselves the right of ecclesiastical ordination or ecclesiastical jurisdiction. We believe this happens through the passing on, through apostolic succession. We believe it happens through being sent out. Okay, You're not just called, you're sent. And you're sent by a valid authority. And, he, and his denomination certainly doesn't have that. His denomination, uh, yeah, look in the register. Look in the register, find out just, just how far back his denomination goes. It's 20 years. Okay. It, it certainly doesn't have the pedigree of, of the Catholic Church. And so, the, the thing is, is I, I had to really balance it out. Now, yeah, he was mad. He, he wasn't happy about it whatsoever. And, and it really hurt. Because I know that in all likelihood, this individual may not speak to me for a while. This individual is not going to be happy with me. I didn't deter him. I didn't convince him to stop, although I did encourage him. This is what I did encourage him with, and I encourage everybody with this, is that for any Protestant who adheres to Sola Scriptura, which I do not, as a Catholic, of course, I do not adhere to Sola Scriptura, but I said, as a, as a Protestant who believes in Sola Scriptura, I said, can you find for me any precedent whatsoever that, that, that would uh, allow someone to assume for themselves the right of ecclesiastical jurisdiction and ecclesiastical authority? Teaching authority in the church on matters of faith and morals. Just find it. In the Old Testament, you don't have it. You have a line of priests. Okay, this line of priests was it was rigid, it was wooden, it was to the T. You knew who was in the line. You couldn't just say, Well, I'm just going to become a priest today. Couldn't do it. In the New Testament, it works the same. Jesus was sent by the Father. Jesus sent the apostles. The apostles sent Paul. Paul sent Timothy. He commanded Timothy to appoint others. You, and and the, the early church affirms the exact same thing. That, that was one of the means by which the early church had to distinguish between who, who had rightful authority and who didn't. And that was, who were you ordained by? And it wasn't were you ordained by a decent guy. It was were you ordained by somebody who was ordained by somebody who was ordained by somebody on and on and on by an apostle. Does your line, does the succession of your ordination, does it, does it end with an apostle? The ordination itself. Does it end with an apostle? There, there is, it, it, it is a biblical doctrine. It is the biblical precedent. This whole notion of just assuming the right of self-ordination, assuming the right of ecclesiastical jurisdiction, is absolutely nonsensical. It is absolutely unbiblical. And it ought to be rejected by every, uh, uh, every Protestant uh, with any integrity whatsoever who, who claims to adhere to Sola Scriptura. And of course, I didn't, I, didn't quite, <laughs> I didn't put him in quite so harsh a terms to him. But that's the bottom line. It really is. It's, you, 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 have to, you have to say, if that's your standard, live by your standard. But don't come to me knowing what my position is and think that I'm going to encourage you in something that I believe to be wrong. I would believe that you would have an invalid ordination and that the assembly that you would be part of would be an unauthorized assembly and that you would be teaching things that I think are heretical. How can I in any way 
support them. As I said, it was not easy whatsoever because this is a decent man. And he genuinely believes. And this is my prayer. This is my prayer. My prayer is that he and others, other Protestants considering the exact same thing, would look into the scriptures and that they would ask themselves, does holy orders, as it is understood by the Catholic Church, have precedent within scripture and within history? My answer is yes. Okay, I believe firmly that that's the case. So I, I really, I, I hope and pray that it doesn't work out. And you know what? Life, life is tough. And life throws stuff like this at you all the time. And it's just unfortunate that on uh, certain occasions, uh, whether they be rare or whether they be common, that they involve people you love very dearly.